Well, welcome to another episode of News of the Day. This is a special feature of Star Cells and God, where we alert you to breaking scientific discoveries that have significance uh, for the Christian faith. And I got with me here two preprints. They're not yet published, but they've been submitted to the monthly notices of the Royal Astronomical Society. And these are two papers published by what's known as the Dark Energy Survey Collaboration. It involves 71 astronomers, and they're doing the deepest survey to date of uh, supernova. And the supernova range is 1,829 supernova. These are type 1A supernova, and they're standard candles. And basically what these two papers are doing, and the reason why this is such a significant breakthrough, is they have resolved what's known as the Hubble constant tension. And uh, this has been a recent challenge to the uh, Big Bang creation model in this sense. And we try to measure the expansion rate, how fast the universe is expanding based on galaxies that are relatively nearby. Uh, we get a higher value for the cosmic expansion rate than if we come up with the same calculations based on galaxies that are extremely distant or based on the radiation left over from the cosmic creation event. So we got this discrepancy between measurements based on the very distant universe and measurements based on the nearby universe. Now, it's not a big discrepancy. We're talking just a few percent, uh, but the error bars are now down to about 1%. So the fact that we see a 4 to 5% discrepancy where the error bars are only 1%, this is what's known as the Hubble constant tension. Now, Astronomers have known for some time uh, that a significant part of that tension is resolved by simply recognizing that our Milky Way galaxy is in an under-dense region of the universe. And if you're in an under-dense region, uh, that means that that lower density is actually going to cause uh, galaxies to appear to be expanding away fr from one another faster than they would be in the rest of the universe. However, as I've written on uh, our website at reasons.org, the papers analyzing this under-dense region, by the way, the fact that we are in an under-dense region is one reason we can have advanced life here in our Milky Way galaxy, uh, but they also recognize it's not sufficient to take care of the, all of the tension between measurements based on the distant universe and measurements based on the nearby universe. It can, it can accommodate some of it, but not all of it. There's still a remaining tension uh, between the two sets of measurements. Now, I've also written uh, in a paper that's uh, cited in the notes here uh, that uh, there are three ways we can take care of the remaining uh, tension in the Hubble constant. And one way is to simply recognize, well, maybe the geometry of the universe isn't flat. It measures to be flat, but if it slightly departs from a flat geometry, that could take care of the Hubble constant tension. Another way we can take care of it is if uh, there are systematic errors, because the measurements based on the nearby universe are basically where we use Cepheid variable stars to calibrate the much brighter type 1a supernova. And these are what we call standard candles, which means that every Cepheid variable of a particular period of variability has the identical brightness. And so we can measure the distances of Cepheid variables that are nearby. And because all Cepheid variable stars have the same uh, brightness, uh, given that they have the same period of variability, that allows us to determine the distances to Cepheid variable stars that are in other galaxies. Uh, they're not bright enough that we can actually directly measure the distances uh, in other galaxies, but they are in our galaxy. And type 1a supernova are also we know as standard candles, uh, that when these supernovae explode, their maximum brightness uh, is the same no matter where the type 1a supernova occurs. And these are very bright, uh, but their distances are calibrated uh, by these Cepheid variable stars. And there's a systematic effect in those Cepheid variable stars, that could explain the Hubble constant tension. And we already got some idea that that's the case because when we use a different standard candle, what's known as the tip of the red giant branch stars and, and globular clusters, 
uh, we see that we get a different value for the cosmic expansion rate than we do for the uh, with those based on Cepheid variable stars, and it's in the right direction to resolve the tension. It actually gives us a lower value for the cosmic expansion rate. Well, what this team of 71 astronomers did is they said, rather than using what's called the uh, distance ladder method, where we measure the distances to Cepheid variable stars and use those distances uh, to determine the distances to the more distant type 1a supernova that are brighter, and so we kind of step up. They said, we're going to use a reverse distance ladder. In other words, we're going to use distances based on far away objects and basically use that to calibrate down to where things are nearby. And uh, the one thing that they were able to develop uh, was using what's known as the baryon acoustic oscillations to determine uh, distances out to galaxies that are literally billions of light years away. Now, that sounds rather technical, baryon acoustic oscillations. What's that all about? Well, first of all, baryons are the stuff we're all used to. Baryons refer to uh, neutrons and protons. It's what makes up ordinary matter. Uh, but astronomers have known for decades that most of the matter of the universe is not baronic matter. It's an exot exotic matter, dark matter made up of dark matter particles that, unlike protons and neutrons, don't strongly interact with light. Uh, but most of the matter in the universe is this exotic dark matter. Uh, there's about six times as much uh, of this ex dark matter than there is what's called ordinary matter, the matter that we're made up of, our planets are made up of, our solar system is made up of. However, the fact that ordinary matter strongly interacts with light and dark matter does not strongly interact with light, if at all, uh, means that we get some unusual structures in the universe. And this is what the acoustic oscillations are all about. And the first slide actually shows you what the universe looks like when we look at very large scales. Basically shows you that uh, it has uh, the galaxies and galaxy clusters are distributed on the surface of bubbles. This is what's called the cosmic web, but it's kind of more like a soap bubble bath. And uh, what we notice is that the galaxies and galaxy clusters are distributed on the surfaces of these gigantic bubbles. And these bubbles measure to be tens to hundreds of millions of light years across. So they're very big structures. And this is what we notice when we look at the universe on the largest scale structure. And uh, we now understand what's responsible for making these bubbles. Namely, that the, uh, what, the dark matter, the exotic dark matter, matter that doesn't strongly interact with radiation, it will collapse under its own gravity uh, and it'll also attract some ordinary matter with it. But the ordinary matter will produce stars, and these stars will shine with a lot of light, and uh, that uh, emission of light from the galaxy uh, that's at the center of this uh, collapse of dark matter, it'll form these gigantic galaxies, and that will blast the area with light, and what that does is it scatters out the ordinary matter, but leaves the dark matter in the center. So it explains why we see these bubbles of ordinary matter, where we have galaxies and galaxy clusters on the surface of the bubble. And at the center of the bubble, we have this dense uh, agglomeration of dark matter. Now, uh, the ratio of dark matter to ordinary matter and what's known as dark energy. Another technical term, dark energy, refers to the energy that's embedded in the space surface of the universe. And the way it operates is dark. It does not have any light properties. It doesn't emit any light or heat at all. It's not light. It's energy embedded in the cosmic space surface. And the way it works is that surface gets larger and larger as the universe expands. It causes the cosmic expansion rate to get greater and greater and greater. And so what these teams of astronomers have done is they've actually mapped galaxy clusters and galaxies in the very distant universe and are able to map uh, these bubbles, this what's called the cosmic web. And by measuring the sizes of the bubbles and the distribution of the bubbles, they can determine the ratio of dark matter to ordinary matter. They can also determine the property of dark energy. And that's why they refer to themselves as a dark energy survey. 
They're basically mapping these galaxy and galaxy clusters, discovering these type 1a supernova inside the galaxies where these supernova are exploding. And uh, they're basically using uh, the uh, baryon acoustic oscillations to determine the distances of these uh, uh, type 1a supernova. Now this is the biggest supernova survey that's ever been achieved. 1,829 supernova have been discovered, type 1a supernova, the ones that are standard candles. And they range in distances, uh, I've got it written down here, from 140 million light years away uh, to uh, 10.92 billion light years away. Uh, so these are the most distant uh, supernova, and therefore they're able to measure the properties of dark energy, because that's the third way we can resolve the Hubble constant tension. Uh, it's always been assumed by astronomers that dark energy is governed by a single physical constant. However, it's possible that the equation of state for dark energy uh, is not constant. It may have a slight variation. If it has a slight variation, even a tiny variation, that would completely resolve the Hubble uh, constant uh, tension. And so this is the first time that astronomers have had sufficient data of these distant supernova combined with the cosmic or the uh, uh, baryon acoustic oscillations to actually determine the character of dark energy uh, at a range of distances from, say, 1 billion light years away to 11 billion light years away. And it's the first time that, that astronomers have been able to determine that it appears that dark energy is not governed by a single physical constant, what's known as a cosmological constant that Albert Einstein uh, came up with, but it actually does seem to be a slight variation in the equation of state for dark energy. That's the breakthrough. And astronomers have known all along, if that is the case, there is no Hubble constant tension, there is no threat to the standard Big Bang creation model, and no threat to the uh, philosophical consequence, there must be an agent beyond space and time that created our universe of matter, energy, space, and time, and set it up in such a way with just the right kind of dark energy and the right ratio of dark matter to ordinary matter so that the universe expands at just the right rates at just the right times in cosmic history so that we can have a galaxy in an under-dense region at the right time in the history of the universe where advanced life can live and thrive. Uh, that's the bottom line. And in the notes here, I give you links to the two research papers. They're not yet published, but in one sense, uh, when they're in a preprint form, you can read the entire preprint for free. And it's just simply, I mean, uh, these will get published. As I said, that it'll, you know, they'll show up in the monthly notice of the Royal Astronomical Society. I've also attached an article I've written a few months ago where I explain the different ways that the Hubble constant tension can be resolved. But the big breakthrough is it really does appear, number one, uh, that uh, there's a problem with the Cepheid variable systematic errors, and number two, uh, dark energy is not governed by a cosmological constant. There's a very slight variation. Now, uh, this is a breakthrough, and uh, what astronomers are looking forward to is strong confirmation from the Euclid telescope. What's the Euclid telescope? It's a European Space Agency instrument uh, that has been sent to join the James Webb Space Telescope at the Lagrange 2 point in Earth's orbit, but a million miles away. So now we got two major telescopes at that point, but Euclid is different from the James Webb Space Telescope. It's specifically designed to do a very thorough mapping of the baryon acoustic oscillations. And so within a year or two, it'll be able to produce the data to actually affirm uh, what's been discovered uh, by these uh, astronomers known as a dark energy survey uh, collaboration. Uh, so yeah, uh, we'll be able to actually pin down with high precision exactly what's happening in dark energy, but it does seem that dark energy is a little more complex than what Albert Einstein had presumed. Uh, and I'm predicting that when we actually get it all well pinned down, it's going to yield even more dramatic evidence of how exquisitely designed our universe is to make possible the existence of billions of human beings in the Milky Way galaxy at just the right time that they can live and thrive and have 
uh, the technology they need to take the good news of salvation to all the people and groups of the world. So this will be posted on our YouTube channel shortly. And if you're not already a subscriber, uh, please subscribe to, to the Reasons to Believe YouTube channel, and uh, you'll be automatically alerted to new video clips like this one. Thank you.